Let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure and I'll start with FPGA main. Main point of this VI is to read stereo audio samples, send them up to the RT target via a FIFO, read processed audio, and then play those out the output. This is a perpetual loop and you can control the loop time to adjust the sampling rate. Here I'm picking up the left and right audio samples, bundling them together, and then sending them to the RT target via the DMF, DMA FIFO. The zero timeout option means that this VI does not block if the RT target is not reading its end of the FIFO. However, you will see that showing up as an RT overflow error. On this end, we're reading values from the RT target. Again, zero timeout means that the VI does not block if the RT is not filling the FIFO at its end. We pick apart those two values and then send those to the audio output left and right channels. The loop time control and overflow indicators are intended for programmatic control technique by the RT VI. Continuing with the overall structure, let's review RT main. The VI begins by opening a reference to the FPGA VI. Let's take a look at configuring this. You can select the VI in a number of different ways. Make sure this option is selected so that the VI runs when it's downloaded to the target. The invoke method is used to request the depth of the DMA FIFOs and it also reports the actual depth. And I'm using the same constant to initialize both of these. So this is a little bit of initialization at the beginning and then we enter the main processing loop. First thing we do is define the audio sampling rate in kilosamples per second, convert that into microseconds and then use that to manipulate the front panel control loop time on the FPGA VI. Also, this reads the overflow indicators from the front panel. The audio frame size and samples defines the number of elements to read from the FPGA. This is returned as an array. The array is split up into the left and right channels. And for the purpose of this demonstration, the processing applied is very simple. It's just applying a gain. You certainly ought to consider replacing this with your own audio filter or effect. After processing, these are bundled back together and then sent back down to the FPGA. The processed values are also displayed on the front panel indicator of RT main. The loop performance is measured up here, measuring the loop time, or the actual loop time, and then you can artificially increase the minimum loop time for purposes of experimentation. Either an error or clicking the stop button causes you to break out of this loop, and then you finish by closing the reference to the FPGA VI, and with this option, it actually causes the VI to stop. Let's create and configure some DMA FIFOs. Begin by right-clicking the FPGA target and select New FIFO. I recommend using a descriptive name that indicates the direction, as I've done here. The type we need is either Host to Target or Target to Host DMA. And you also define the depth of the FIFO. You can choose the data type. Under interfaces, you can select between several different options and you also indicate the number of elements to read or to write. For the particular configuration in this VI, the number of requested elements is 511. 
Data type is U32. Number of elements per read is one. Simply drag the FIFO into your block diagram once it exists in the project. Let's jump back to RT main and see what's happening with the newly created FIFO on that end. Look under FPGA interface and invoke method. Once this is attached to the FPGA reference, then a number of options become available. These FIFOs must already exist in the LabVIEW project. For example, this is how you would be able to establish the configuration as, as we do at the beginning of the VI. Look under again FPGA interface. Here we have open FPGA, FPGA VI reference. Inside the main processing loop, we had the programmatic read write control. Again, the invoke method, we've seen this one. And then close FPGA VI reference. Back in FPGA main, let's look for join and split. These are available under the numeric palette under data manipulation. There's split and join. And finally, the FPGA I.O. nodes for audio. You can find all four of those located here. You have your inputs and your outputs for both left and right channels.